Okay. Ms. Patillion, you're on. Yeah. How are we doing today? Good. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. How are you doing today? Good. But I know how excited you probably are to be back at school a week early, right? Come on, you have to be sick of the sun and the hot weather and being able to sleep in, right? All right. Can I have your attention, please? Okay, so as Mr. Minch told you, my name is Ms. Vitalia, and I teach 7th grade here at Independence. So a lot of you coming up, try to recognize my face, you'll probably see me out in the hallway often, okay? Throughout this whole orientation, it is extremely important that you pay attention to me because I'm going to be giving you tips and tricks and things you can do if it's something you already know how to do, because most of you probably are professionals more so than I am with Google and technology in general. Help a neighbor. If you see somebody next to you that's struggling, be the teacher, okay? If I'm saying something they don't see it, point it out. Most importantly, while I'm showing you something, I don't want you to completely close the Chromebook screen, but I want you to at least put it down so we're focusing up here and not on the Chromebook, okay? Because what I'm gonna do throughout this is I'm gonna show you how to do something, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like, and then I'm going to want you to find it. Okay, so it's important you're looking at me first, looking at what I'm showing you, and then trying to do it on your own. We got it? Got it, okay. So first thing I want you to do, obviously keep your hand up if Mr. Minch has to come and help you to log in. But most of us are logged in and good to go with Google, correct? Yes. yes. Okay, so lower your screen. Don't completely close it because I don't want it to log you out. Just close it so it's down. So today we're going to talk about the basics. How many of you have used Google? Obviously to search, but how many of you even have a Gmail? Most of you should, a personal one maybe. Okay, great. So a lot of you, you're going to know a lot of what I'm talking about. This is just a refresher so that we're good to go for the start of the school year. Today we're going to talk about accessing your Gmail account. If you haven't accessed your BP Hawks Gmail account already at Neil, you're going to be using it often here at school. So I'm going to show you how to log on to that, maybe organize it with some labels, because I don't know how many of you have done that on your own, um, creating a Word document and a presentation, locating files on your Chromebook. This is going to be different, because before, with just Google, it's a little bit different with a PC. Here you have access to files that you're doing when you're working offline. And of course, troubleshooting. So here's the one other thing I'm going to ask of you. If you have a question that's not related to directly what we're talking about, save it in your mind and bring it up at the end because I'm going to open it up to any individual questions you may have. Okay? Because it's very possible I may answer your question. That's why I want you to wait until the end. Okay? Alright, so the first thing we're going to talk about is going to your Gmail account. At this point, open up your Chromebook. All of you should see the Google main screen on your computer. If you were doing something else in the meantime, waiting for us, that's fine. Just minimize it. We're not on that right now. Go on to gmail.com. All of you should be logged in. So if you go to gmail.com, you should see your mailbox pop up on the screen. I'm going to do it on my computer also. So this is what you should see. Your Gmail. When you see your Gmail account, raise your hand. You don't have one? That's fine. If you don't see it, that's fine. But once you see your Gmail account, raise your hand. If you're on the main Google page, those of you that can't see it, You should see mail in the upper right hand corner. That is what you want to click and when you click on mail, it should load your email.
to listen because you might be seeing this on your computer. If you have something pop up that says user identification portal, this is because you need to log into the Wi-Fi. Okay? Try using last name dot first name. Do not put the vphawks.org and use the same password you use to log into your Gmail. That should get you onto the Wi-Fi. Try that and see if it works for you. I'm going to circulate around. Okay? Remember, look around and see if your neighbors need help and help them if you've been able to hold up on your screen. So now that we're in our Gmail, everybody should see that screen. The reason mine looks a little different is because you can change the colors. A lot of you, when I was walking around, some of you have background images, some of you have different themes. That's okay. You can change that at the end whenever you're messing around with your email. You have the ability to change your background color, add things, because it's your email. Okay? That's why mine might look a little different than yours. What I want you to do at this point, we're going to organize our inbox. What we're going to do right now, you can always change in the future, but I just want to show you how to do it so you know. So I want you to go to the settings option, and it's in the upper right-hand corner. If you've changed your background before, you probably know what this is. It's this little button right here all the way to the right at the top. We're going to go to settings, and then we're going to go to the actual settings option. It should pull up a screen that looks like this. If you see this screen, raise your hand for me right now. Great, put it down. Unless you're waiting for this event, you can leave your hand up. So once we're on this screen, we're going to go to Labels. It's the second option here. And you're going to click on it. You should see a bunch of things pop up. What we are looking for, if we scroll down, is this right here. It says labels and then it says create new label. These labels will be helpful to you because when you get emails from your teachers, from other students in your classes, it's very difficult to find things in your inbox. So when we label it, we can actually filter everything so that we can see just our emails from our science class or just our emails from our reading class. So what I want you to do right now is press create new label. You're going to see a little box pop up on your screen like this. I would like you to create a label for each of your core classes. Again, we're just doing this to try it. You can always get rid of these or edit them in the future. So I want you to make a label for reading, language arts, science, math, and social studies. Make yourself five labels. Literally, all you have to do is type it in and then hit create, and you will see it pop up in your options. I'm 
going to give you a couple minutes to do that. I'm going to walk around, keep your hand up if you have a question, and I'll help you. side of their screen. So you can see how I have reading listed. Obviously I don't have any conversations in here, but do you see this little upside down triangle? If we click on that, you can change the color of your label so that when it shows up in your inbox, you'll see that color next to it. So you have the choice to change the colors of your labels in your inbox. You don't necessarily have to do that right now, but I just wanted to make sure everybody was able to find where we create labels and create them for their subjects. Can I see a show of hands for everybody that did that successfully? Awesome job, you're pros already. All right, can we load our screens again so I can have your attention, please? You guys are doing an awesome job. I'm still waiting on some people. Can we lower our screens, please? Okay, great. With a room this big of people with computers, it's very important that I get all your focus, okay? So now that we've mastered the basics of Gmail, we're gonna go back to that at the end and try to compose a message, but I just wanted you to see what it has. Google Drive is going to be extremely important to you. How many of you have used Google Drive in the past? Great, so again, this should be a breeze for you. Google Drive is where we're going to create documents, presentations, and projects. You're probably going to do a lot of that this year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you go to Google Drive in a moment, and I'm going to show you some basics there. Open your computers again. Thank you. When we open our computers, you are in your Gmail account right now. Google Drive is somewhere, com not completely different, but it's a different screen, a different option. So what we're going to do is we are going to go in the upper right-hand corner. If you see where my mouse is, my cursor, it's with a little grid. It looks like a square grid. We're going to click on the square grid, and we are going to go to Drive. It's a green, yellow, and blue, almost triangle, it looks like. When we click on Drive, you should see a screen like this pop up. Some of you may have documents already in there. Some of you may not have anything. Again, that's fine. I just want to make sure you're seeing this main screen. Okay. 
Did you see it? Are you all on the screen? It's okay. It may take a while to load because, like Mr. Minch said, we have a large volume of people in the room. So our wireless connection can usually only handle so many at a time. So give it a second.
You can just name it test folder if you want. Just because obviously you may change this in the future. You don't know what you're going to be doing in your classes yet. I just want you to know how to create a folder. So I just want you to create one folder in that class folder. And then I want you to hit the create button. I'm just going to leave it as new folder. And you should see it pop up just like mine did on the screen. Okay, I'm going to give you a second to do that, and I'm going to walk around. Again, look at your neighbors. If they're struggling, try to help them, okay? Yeah. talking about. 
That was the question number one that I noticed. Question number two. Ms. Petillion, my schedule is changing. Should I still put a folder in one of the folders that are there for me? Yes. And then you can delete it. I just want you to see how you can make one, and then you can delete it. If your schedule's getting changed, that will all change for you whenever the time comes. This is just a test, like I said, to try to make things work. Okay? How many of you were able to create a folder in one of your class folders? Still a majority of you? Awesome. Okay, so I want you to lower your screens for me. Lower your screens for me. So, we just learned how to create a folder so that we can become organized. Your teachers are going to be so thrilled, okay? Now I'm going to show you where the documents are at if they are shared with you. So there is a section here that says shared with me. Under this section, you're going to see, you may see nothing right now. Obviously, under mine, there's a lot of things. This is where we are going to see things that are shared with us. Not that we created, but that somebody else created, and they want us to see it. Okay, That could be a project you're working on with students in your class. It could be something your teacher created that she wants you to see and use. That is where you're going to see those documents. So if you're creating something yourself, it's going to be under my drive. If something is created and being shared with you, it's going to be under shared with me. Make sense? Pretty obvious, right? So I just wanted you to know those two things. Still have our Chromebooks down. Screens down. <laughs> all right, so the great thing about Google Drive that I do want all of you to know is that you are able to share work with other students, you're able to create things on your own, you're able to get feedback so people can comment on things, all without having to print out pieces of paper and hand them over in the excuse of, I forgot it at home or I forgot it in my locker, guess what? It's somewhere up there in the Google Cloud. So it's pretty impossible to forget, which is awesome for some of us that are forgetful like me. I forget things all the time. Okay? And the other great thing about Google Drive is it saves as you go. And what we're going to talk about in a little bit is what happens when we work offline and what happens when we work online. So we created folders. Now we're going to talk about projects. How many of you have created a document on Google Docs before? All right, so the hands are slowly reducing some people. Did I hear moans and groans back there? Oh, come on. Well, guess what? I'm about to put you to work, okay? I want you to open up your screens again. Now, let's remember, just because we're opening up our screens, we still want to be listening to what I'm saying, okay? So we're going to go into our drive. You should see your drive, of course. Let's go back to my drive, not the shared with me drive. Everybody should be under my drive. You should see a big red button that says create. It's in the upper left hand corner. I want you to click on the create button and we are going to create a document. I don't want you to pick anything else. We're going to go to document. That is the first option underneath folder. It should be a blue, it almost looks like a piece of paper. And when you click on it, you should get something that looks very familiar to Microsoft Word. It's going to be a blank page. Don't mind this, I'm not sure what this is. Okay, so you should see a blank page just like this, and you should see options for fonts, changing the size, changing the color, things again that you should be used to seeing with Microsoft Word, except instead of Microsoft Word, we're saving this into our Google Drive. What I want you to do right now is just write a, write a school appropriate sentence on the Word document. So maybe, hi, my name is, insert the name. I'm so excited to be coming to seventh grade, because I know that's the truth for all of you. Once you type that sentence, 
I want you to lower your screen so that I know you are ready for the next step of the process. Like I said, help the neighbor out. share with the rest of you. So Google Google just released an updated view of their drive, okay? And instead of create, it says new, and it looks a little different, but the basic functions of the drive are the same. They have a few new words and such, um, but the, the, the drive itself is exactly the same. So some of you might look at this and say, well, that looks a little different than mine. Somewhere along the line, you create, you, when you log in, it asks you, do you want to try the new Google Drive or something like that? And you hit yes, and that's why it's showing you that different view. But it's the same basic working fundamental system. Some of the words are different, like create is now new, and the way they show you your documents is a little bit different, but it's still the same. Okay. Ready? I'm going to keep helping some people. Okay. All right, so it looks like most of you have typed your, you know, generic sentence in your Word document, okay? At this point, I want you to flip your screen open for me again. All of you should see in the upper left-hand corner where it says untitled document. We don't want to leave things untitled because then later on, trust me, it's happened to me. You're going to go on and say, oh my gosh, untitled, what the heck was that? When did I make that? What was that for? Then you're going to have to actually click it to go in and look at it. We don't want to have to do that. We want to know what this document is. So what you need to do is you need to click where it says untitled document and something should pop up that looks similar to my screen. It should say rename the document and you can enter a document name. Just like our test folder, I want you to write test document. Or you can just write test. Doesn't matter, just something generic because again, this isn't something we're necessarily going to keep, but we want to know that it's not something extremely important like an essay we have to turn in. Once you put that new title in, I'm going to write test. You hit OK, and you should see the name that you typed in now listed in the upper left-hand corner instead of untitled the document. I don't know if any of you were watching when I was trying to type my sentence up here, but it, something came up that said it was unable to save my changes. Don't freak out when you see that, because I have before thinking, oh my gosh, it didn't save what I typed. Miraculously, Google Drive does save almost instantly when you're typing. But because there's so many of us logged on right now, like you've seen, obviously, the last hour or so, sometimes things take a while to load, and sometimes it doesn't necessarily do things as quickly as we want. That's just because there's a lot of us doing this at one time. Okay? If that happens and it says revert to original document or, or, or earlier version of the document, just hit that, and it should still have the changes that you've made up until you went to exit the document, okay? So at this point, I'm going to show you how to share. So I want you to lower your screen again. If you still have a question for Mr. Minch, by all means, keep your hand up, but you can still be watching the screen up in the front with me, okay? So let's say I want to share this document with one of my friends. I think it's a really cool essay, or maybe I just want them to read it over and give me some suggestions. You should see a blue button in the upper right hand corner, and if you see where my cursor's at, see how it says private only to me? I'm going to click that share button, 
screen still down, guys. I'm going to click that share button, and you're going to see a screen like this pop up. Now, of course, I'm the owner, so it tells me, hey, you're the owner. And that's great, because that means I can do whatever I want to that document. But let's say I want Mr. Minch to look things over for me. I'm going to type in Mr. Minch's last name, and you should see that it actually recognizes what you start to type in and associates it with people in the district, students and teachers. Okay, so I'm going to choose Mr. Minch. And does everybody also see to the right here how it says can edit? Well, I trust Mr. Minch, and I feel like if he's looking at something and he thinks it should be different, I'm okay with him being able to edit my paper. But here's what I'm going to recommend to you. Most of the time, we want people to be able to read our papers or read our documents and not necessarily edit them. So we don't really want to give a lot of people that option unless our teacher tells us to, if it's a peer revision or something like that. So if I wanted to change that, let's say I don't want Mr. Minch to edit, I just want him to comment. That means he can pick things in my document and he can comment on them, but he can't change it. That's probably a really good option for most of you because it gives you feedback, but it doesn't necessarily change what you make. And lastly, if we just want people to be able to view it and not change anything or not put comments in, just simply look at it, we pick can view. So here's the task you need to do for me. I need you to open up your Chromebook. I need you to hit the share button. And I want you to pick one friend that you would like to share your test document with. One friend. Once you figure out who that friend is, or somebody you know that you would like to share it with, hey, if you want to share it with me, that's fine, but good luck spelling my last name, okay? I want you to type in their name, and then hit send. You should then see their name pop up under yours, and it will also tell you what rights they have to your document, if they can edit it, if they can comment on it, and if they can view it. Once you've done that, lower your screen so I know that you're ready to go. All right, can I see a show of hands of people who were able to share with a friend? Great, 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 great. If you have it, again, that's fine. We're going to have time at the end to be able to mess around with things on our own. So once I'm done sharing my document with whoever I want to share it with, I'm going to hit done. So now at this point, if I've shared it, the person is saved in there, they can see my document, and guess what's really cool about it? Anytime you make changes to that document, not only does it save it, but when you go into your drive, does everybody see how my test document showed up there? On the right hand side, it says activity, like up on my screen. It has my first initial and then it says all the things that I've done. The person I shared that document with will be able to see what things I've done to the document. So let's say they haven't looked at it in a while, but they noticed that I made some changes. They can then go on and see what changes I made. Okay, so it's really cool to see what you've been doing, go back to things that you've recently revised, and also share it with people and show them what you've changed. Does anybody have questions so far? Not technical issues, but just questions in general about anything I've showed you up to this point. No? Awesome. So we're going to move on from sharing. We talked about that. All right, uh, Mr. Minch. All right, as soon as Mr. Minch is done, I'm just going to talk briefly about working offline, but Mr. Minch is going to get a little bit more in-depth with that when he makes his way up here. Um, so let's put our screens down for a second because we do not need to be looking at anything right now. How many of you have wireless access and help? Wow, okay, so this won't be an issue for a lot of you. But there may be times where you have your Chromebook. I know 
know I have my phone. Lots of you probably have smartphones where you go to a place that you don't have wireless access. Here's the great thing about these Chromebooks. You don't need the internet to work on projects. You can work on your documents without being online. So even if you don't have wireless at home, you can still work on things at home. And Mr. Mitch is going to tell you what's a little bit different about working offline compared to working online, okay? Okay, so that's exactly right. We can do things offline we don't need to be connected to the internet. So at times, when perhaps your uh, Wi-Fi even went down, there's a way in which your documents can be synced with the drive while you're at school. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the drive here. Now, what I here's what I want you to do. I want you to watch what I'm doing. I do not want you to do this on your Chromebook right now. And there's a very simple reason for that. We're doing actually a very good job of staying connected because, again, in the school, we're ready to go for 700, 800 students, but it's a little harder in one room with as many as we have. So we're doing a really good job with that, actually. But in this next step requires a lot of download time. So I would like us not to actually run the download. I want to show you how to do it. Okay? Does everybody understand? So we're not going to download right now. I'm just going to show you. It's very simple. In your drive, there is a process that Google Drive syncs every time you're connected. So when a teacher sends you a, 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 uh, an assignment, that assignment is going to be uploaded to your file folder, and it's also going to be put onto the hard drive Actually, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of those little cards that's in your computer. It'll be loaded on there as well. Your documents up to a certain number are sunk in, with that process. You see, if every, and everybody can click this. If you see there was a more and a less at the bottom on the left-hand side, there was a more and less. Just open your Chromebooks for one second. Just click on the more. And I don't want you to do anything past that. Everyone should see something there that says offline. Now, I don't want you to go there right now, but I just want to show you where it is. On the left-hand side, there's a more. You want to click it. If you have your files expanded on the left side, it's at the very bottom. So you need to shrink that. The way that you shrink your file folders, if you see that little arrow where my pointer is, I can expand and then put the folders back in. So we want to make sure those are minimized right now. You'll see an option there called offline. Now, I do not want you to do this right now. As a matter of fact, I want you to take your screens and I want you to load them down again. Okay? I'm waiting. Just want to make sure we're all clear. Looking in the back. We're still waiting for some screens to go down a little bit. There we go. And this will be a technique your teachers will use with you too. You need to start to get used to that idea. Because teachers will want to redirect you to what they are saying. So they will make sure in a class of 25 that everybody's screen is lower. It doesn't mean it has to be closed completely, but just lower. When I click on offline, it's going to ask me some series of questions. And I would, it, it says install the Drive Chrome web app, but it says that we already have the web app. You see right here, it says we already have the web app. That is going to be true on all your Chromebooks. You're not going to need to install it. It's already there. And so we just enable the offline. And that's going to sync all your documents up to a certain storage amount. It's not a number of documents. It's not going to store everybody for 100 documents. It's going to store up to a certain amount of space. Now, the good news is, is that what are you going to be working on? You're going to be working on the documents you've just received in the past couple weeks. 
That is enough of offline storage for you. Now, when you are working offline on these documents, and you can see that there are some documents populating in Mrs. Batillion's offline folder. That is available to her now when she goes home. When she goes home, and she has a Wi-Fi goes down and says, oh my goodness, I still need to finish that test for tomorrow. She can access the test, she can work on it, and then the next time she comes into school, or the next time she's connected to the internet, the drive itself will push that new information out so that it's updated and ready to go. So what I want you to do, when you go home, I want you to go through the offline process. Okay, I want you to click on offline, and I want you to enable offline. Even if you have Wi-Fi, even if you have Wi-Fi, because you never know when your Wi-Fi might go down. Okay, now here's a good question that you might have. When your Chromebook is open, that's when it's syncing documents, okay? So if you leave school at the end of the day and you haven't opened up your Chromebook at, the, at, at all that day, the Chromebook is not going to be syncing those documents. Does, it, does that make sense to you? Because it's not thinking at that point in time. It's not doing any work at that time. Okay? So it's going to be important at some point during the day, at lunch or prior, or, and you'll, you'll open it during the day, so I'm not really that concerned about it, but I just want you to be aware that it has to be thinking to gather that information. Okay? So that's working offline. All right. Now we've been in here for an hour. Here's what I would like to do. I would like to take a quick break. Don't move yet. Because I want any students that need a little bit of assistance to come down and see me. Or Mr. Thinner. We're going to talk about any issues that you're having. I want us to get a drink of water. I want us to walk around. What I need you to do, think about this in class. Where do you think your Chromebook needs to go right now? In the case. It needs to go in the case. Now, let's use common sense here. Should we set it on the seat? Because no. the seat's going to pop up, right? No. Yes. So the best thing we can do is we can probably slide it just under the seat in front of us, just barely. Slide it under the seat in front of us. And let's all be careful when we're walking out that we're not stepping on them. Okay? Let's look. Go ahead and take it. Let's be back here in 10 minutes. In 10 minutes. Anybody who needs assistance, come on down and see us. Can you download should be school appropriate? I don't think that's something we necessarily have to reiterate, but we're going to just in case. Should be school appropriate and of course free, okay, obviously. Um, I know somebody said they, they already heard Angry Birds, so like I said, I'm sure some of you have already started looking things up, and that's fine. And another question along the lines of that was, can we, use, can we use things like Pandora to listen to music? Now, of course, yes, you can, but it's not something you're going to want to access, of course, during class or during instruction, but you can use it just like a computer at home. So you can go on to things like Pandora and listen to it. You can Google search, but again, you want to keep things school appropriate, okay, inside and outside of school. All right, so I'm going to hand things over to Mr. Mitch really quick. So I want to talk about that real quick, because there's something I want you guys to understand. These Chromebooks, who actually owns them? Not me. Actually, the district. The district... The district is the community. That's your parents, me, teachers, central administrators, because we pay taxes and we help fund this school system. Okay? You are using them like you are using a textbook. Okay? So, the expectation is that you will use them for school appropriate uses. That doesn't mean that we're going to micromanage some of the fun things that you want to do with them, but it needs to be school appropriate. So let's think about what that means. 
language. I get a filter report from the Chromebooks that tells me things that are flagged. Okay? Language, inappropriate types of searches. That all comes to me. And I've been getting it. Okay? And they've not been awful, but I've been getting it. And you've noticed probably that there are certain things that are blocked. Have you noticed that? Yes. And, and certainly, not everything that we block is all bad. But there are things that we block that, has, that have some things that we would not want students to use. So we are blocking some of those things. Now, when you learn to drive, someone doesn't give you a keys to a Ferrari and says, have at it, go drive as fast as you want. Right? They don't do that. That's not real life. Think of that in the same way with these computers. That over time, you might see some things open up once we feel comfortable that you understand the parameters. The filtering system on these computers filters and will block and will notify me if there's something that you're searching for that is on the list of things that we would not want you to look for. So I want you to know that. I wasn't able to get to that in handing these out. The purpose of the training team is to talk about that. So understand something. When you go and search, I'm not looking at what you're searching at. It notifies me when something is not quite right. Okay? That's when it notifies me. So when we talk about school-appropriate use, the angry birds, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. You want to play a fun game, that's not a problem. What's going to be a problem is when you're using it in an inappropriate or destructive manner. We'd like to stay away from games that are violent. I'm sure you have game systems at home or other things and if your parents want to have you play those, that's fine. We're asking you not to play that on school devices. But the PG rated types of games are going to be fine. Web searches. It looks for keywords in web searches. And it flags those if they're words that are found to be something we wouldn't want you to be looking up. So know that that's happening right now. I want you to know that up front. As parents, a lot of our systems at home don't have filtering. The nice thing about these computers that we've handed out to you is that we can enforce a filter on it. That's to try to keep you as safe as possible. The other thing you may notice is when you try to email, you can really only email people in the BP Hawks domain. What does that mean? If you want to email me, that would happen. But you couldn't email yourself at your Gmail, like your personal Gmail account. Okay? There's a reason for that. Because this is a vehicle for education. Everything that we're going to ask you to do is going to be within this domain, this imaginary world of BP Hawks. Okay? We don't really want you to venture out of BP Hawks too much. Certainly when you go to the web, you're venturing out of BP Hawks. But your searches are going to be confined to what BP Hawks thinks is appropriate. Okay? Does everybody understand that? Is there any questions on that? I'm going to talk more to your parents about that this evening. Because I want them to understand exactly what I am seeing. Because I'm going to be very, very very transparent with them. There will be no secrets when it comes to this device. There can't be. Because for all the great things it does, there's always that negative side to everything. I don't care whether it's learning to drive a car. If you're not appropriate with a car, people can be hurt. That's what responsibility means. And I think that you're at the point where you can be responsible. I want you to understand the rules. Hey, gentlemen. Please. Okay. Mr. 
So you were going to go over the sharing and where do we find documents. So that was a good segue. Let's get to that. All right, so the last thing we ended on before our break was sharing a document with a friend. And we had somebody come up and ask us, well, where can I see this document that will share it to me? Okay, is it, it's not going to be under your drive because you did create it. Who thinks they know where that document would be if somebody shared it? Or Zoom. Undershared with me, right? Because you didn't create it, somebody else did. So I want you to open up your Chromebooks. And I want you to go under the Share With Me option in your Google Drive. And if you know that a friend of yours or a neighbor shared something with you, you should be able to see that document. If you want to click on it and see what awesome sentence they wrote, feel free to do so. But again, depending on what options they gave you in regard to what you're allowed to do with it, some of you may be able to add a sentence onto the document. If you want to do that, go ahead, because it's really cool to see how you can add things to somebody else's work. If they said you're only allowed to look at it, sorry, you're not allowed to type anything on there. But the cool thing about being able to edit somebody else's stuff is if you're working on a group project, this is a way to work as a group without physically being together. So that excuse of we couldn't get together after school because nobody could take us to the mall to meet up doesn't matter anymore. Because you can still work collaboratively on a document without being together. How cool is that? It's pretty cool for us. <laughs> as teachers because we know that you guys have a lot of capabilities now on what you can do with these awesome new tools you have. If you were able to see the document that was shared with you, let me see a show of hands so I can see how many of you were able to see it. Uh-oh, we have less hands. Why is that? Oh, all right. Some people were just sleeping, I think. All right, good. Wake up. Do we need to get up and do jumping jacks? Yeah. <laughs> And listen, I, I do it all the time. Yeah, no, not with your devices in your hand. Come on, Mr. Minch. I wouldn't make them do that. All right, let's lower our screens because now that we've looked at the document that was shared with us, we don't necessarily need to look at what's there. So this part is going to be difficult for me because I have the MacBook that I'm using for this presentation, not the Chromebook, so I don't have this button on my screen. Um, so I lied. I know I told you to close your Chromebook, but I actually want you to open it up. But I want you to minimize Google Drive. So you should see the background to your computer. Some of you may be basic. Some of you may have changed it already. I know that's usually the first thing we do when we see a new, new tool, new toy, we like to change it. So once you see your background, you're going to see in the lower left-hand corner a little grid that almost looks like the grid that you saw on your Gmail when we try to get into our Google Docs. It looks like a square that's broken up into little squares. When you see that, I want you to click on it. When you click on it, you should see a bunch of different options in that little box that pops up. We're looking for the button that says Files. It should be towards the bottom. It's a bright blue icon. Looks like a folder. When you found that, raise your hand, so I know. All right, maybe I should just quit at this point. You guys are all so good at this. So, hold on. Those of you who raised your hands are next to someone who did not raise their hand. Please, like, please yes. If you have found it, again, let's help. Let's be the teacher, show them where it's at. This button is the files that are located on your Chromebook. And this is when they're working offline, right? That's where they're going to save to? Well, no, they could access those in the drive. But this will be like where pictures they might download. Oh, okay. So I was helping a student earlier, and this is actually where if you would go online, for example, and you don't like any of the backgrounds that come with the Chromebook, you want to download your own. Those of you who are Steeler fans in the building? Anybody? 
Oh, come on. Well, those of you who are Steeler fans, maybe you want to download, you know, a picture of Heinz Ward or one of the Steelers. You want to put that as your background. If you download that picture and save it onto your Chromebook, this is where you're going to find it. Okay, things that you download onto the Chromebook. These aren't necessarily things we're working on on Google Drive. These are things we may, we may find and download. So if you click on that Files button, that's what's going to come up under there. So some of you that I helped this morning to download, you know, pictures for your background, that's where you can access them. Okay? All right, let's lower our screens for a second here. So at this point, I'm going to go over some individual things we want to remember when using our Chromebooks and the internet, um, kind of touch on some things Mr. Minch had said, and then of course I'm going to open it up for some individual questions you may have. So some of you came up during the break and you asked Mr. Minch or I questions that you have, um, but if this is your time maybe to ask the question that you thought of while we were doing this or you didn't have time to come up during the break you needed to go out and get some fresh air, that's fine. First thing we're going to talk about is what I said with the folders. The folders that are your classes. What did I say about those folders? Who can remember? The ones that are your classes that match up with your schedule, yes. We do not want to change them, right? Because they were put there for us. We don't want to change them, but we can add folders inside of there to help us organize ourselves. But we don't want to remove that folder because it was placed there for us. Another thing, Mr. Minch talked about the amount of space that's on this computer. I don't want you to go home and download thousands of pictures to save on your computer just to have them, okay? Because we want to make sure we have that space there in case we need it. The space is there in case we need it. We don't necessarily want to be saving everything there just as our first option. Google Drive is there for us for our documents, and we want to be saving things there, okay? I didn't really touch on this, but I'm going to now because I think it's important. I talked about sharing documents with your friends, sharing them with your teachers, but one thing I didn't talk about was making a copy of a document and saving it for yourself. And the reason that's important is because sometimes you may not want to change something that somebody sent you on their original document, but you want to save a copy for yourself. Maybe you think it's really cool, you want to change it, change the font color, do some cool things to it. You can do that, and I'm going to show you how. So I want you to go to your Google Drive for me, and I would actually like you to pick the document that was shared with you from your friend or neighbor. So for my example, I pulled up a rubric for an essay. We write about animals in my class. So I pulled that up. Now I did not create this document. This document was created by a friend of mine and she shared it with me so that I could have it. But I don't necessarily want to change the document she sent me because that's her original document. So here's what I'm going to do. Eyes up here, please. You're going to see under File on the left-hand side, it says Make a Copy. I'm going to click that button. Now, it automatically saves that document, the copy that you made, and it renames it Copy of whatever the document was that you copied. Now, if you want to keep that as the title, you can go right ahead. If you want to name it something different, that's fine. But as soon as I hit OK, it's going to pop up a screen that looks exactly the same as the document I just had up, except now this is a document for me. This is a document I am creating, and this is actually going to show up under my drive. So any changes I make to this separate document, I'm going to see myself, unless I decide to share it with other people. But that original document that was sent to me, these changes will not show up on there. This is important because, like I said, sometimes you're not going to have the option to edit somebody's work. But that doesn't mean you can't make a copy and do some editing on your own. 
So I want you to take the document that was shared with you, and I want you to make a copy of it for yourself, doing what I just did up there. So go to File, go to Make a Copy, and then I want you to either rename it or just save it as copy of whatever they named it. Once you've done that, lower your screen so I know that we're ready to go. See the copy that you made? or seen somebody who has. There's a big, not a huge difference between PowerPoint and Google presentation, but there are some slight differences. There's not as many things as there is with PowerPoint, but it still has the same capabilities to create a slideshow. Okay, again, nice thing about it is it saves it right on your drive. But one thing I didn't show you is that if we go to my drive and we see create, not only do we have the ability to create documents and presentations, but we can also create spreadsheets, we can create forms. So let's say for a class you have to take a survey, and you have to, maybe you have to do a survey or you need to create one and give it to other people. You can easily create surveys on Google Drive and send them out to your friends, and the great thing is, when they answer that survey, you can get all of the answers right in your drive. Just a cool thing that you can do, I don't know if you've ever tried it. Also, let's say you have a file, and maybe you're not using your Chromebook, maybe you're on a different computer, and you have a file that you want to upload to Google Drive because you want to have access to it on your Chromebook. Please look at the arrow that's right next to Create, and it says Upload. If you click on that arrow, it will say Files, or it will say Folder. I know on my computer, I've done this many times, I've had Word documents that I want to push into Google Drive so that I can edit them on Google Drive. You obviously won't have any files on your computer, but if we would go to Files and click on it, we will be able to have access to all of our files that are on our computer, and then we can click one, I'm not going to do it right now, but we can click one of these documents, and we can hit Open, and it will literally put it into Google Drive and reformat it onto Google Drive. Caution, it will not always format exactly the way it looked on Microsoft Word. You might have used a font that Google Drive doesn't have. Sometimes you might have to reformat, but for the most part, it will upload it into Google Drive for you, which is really nice if you have some things you want to transfer over. Okay? 
Okay? So those are the basics that we wanted to cover today. Is there anything else that you can think of, Mr. Mitch? Offhand? Is there anything that I didn't touch on that you might need to touch on? Yeah, I have some things I want to touch on. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to show you something that the teacher sees. So hang on one second. Okay, let me, re let me redraw your focus up here. Okay, this is a demo class, so I didn't want to bring up any, you know, actual student names. But this is what the teacher sees. So when you're sitting in their class and they're doing some sort of work with you, they have what's called a dashboard. And the dashboard allows them to share things very easily with you. It allows them to maybe share things with just one group because maybe they're doing group work. So they can send it out. As you can see out here, the teacher maybe color-coded this orange. You can see there's orange and there's blue and there's pink. And they can send out things to those different groups based on the color they make them. The thing that I want you to understand is that while you are in school, while you are in school, we have some responsibility to make sure that you're on task, okay? And this is not to say that everything you do in school is going to be on Chromebook, because it's not. So don't think that everything you do will be on there. There will be traditional methods, and there will be using the Chromebook. When students are logged in, and I have like three students in this room right now that are not logged in as themselves, they're logged in as a demo student that I loaded into the system. And what, you will, what we will see is that the teacher is able to see what you are doing in their class. So this is my class. They're loaded into my class right now. And I am able to see what tabs they have open. I can also send a message to you. I can walk over to you or I can send a message saying, you're not supposed to be on that right now. Okay? Probably most people will send a little message because they don't want to embarrass you the first time. Right? You know, because maybe it's something innocent. It's just you're off task. So the teacher has the ability to push out a web page. Let's say the teacher says, okay, we're going to go to the Library of Congress today and we're going to look at a source document of someone who lived in the Great Depression. And we're going to talk about that person's feelings and what they're going through. And bam, they push out a web page to you that has that document, and you're all on there. So we don't have to wait for you to type in the web address. So the teacher can do that from here. The teacher, frankly, can X out the web page from here if you're on something that we don't want you on. Okay? Now, Mr. Minch, is that like all my life? No, we believe you should have privacy. Okay. When you leave school, that is not that does not work. You have to be in our network. You have to be here at school. Okay. So at home, 
The only thing that I feel and that we as a district feel we need to support is that you're using them appropriately. But as far as I have no, I believe that we should treat you as young adults. I'm not going to sit there and look at the web pages you're looking at. I don't have the ability to do that. I don't want to do that. But what I do have is the ability to know if you're looking up things that you shouldn't be looking up because it reports that. Remember how I told you that? Okay, that still holds true after school hours, through the night into the next day. As soon as you walk into school and you open your Chromebook, this is what the teacher can't see. Okay? Now, someone I made student 20, you know, has a Google tab open. I can X that out. And it says, hey, are you sure you want to close the tab on that person's computer? Well, I just closed it out. So I don't know who's in the 20s, you don't need to raise your hand. But I just closed out that tab. I can send student 20 a message. I just sent student 20 a message. Okay? Student 20, again, you don't have to reveal yourself. I'm just showing the students here what can be done. That is during school hours. Can the teacher do this while you're at home? No. Answer? No. 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 What can the teacher do while you're at home? Let's say email works 24 hours a day. So not to say that the teacher is going to check the email at that point in time, but the teacher can receive email, the teacher can send email. 24 hours, okay? The teacher can see documents. Not documents that you're actively working on, but documents that are shared with them. So you can see here, and I'll see if I can find any anybody that has a document they've shared. There's one document that's up in the dashboard right now. The teacher can see that doesn't mean that you're actively working on it right now. It just means that it's there and they can grade it. They can give you feedback on it. That can happen 24 hours a day. The teacher also has the ability to run blogs, so discussion groups. And all of that will be managed for the teacher. Now, there's no blog created for this class yet, but your teachers can do that. That blog will be active 24 hours a day because that's what blog is. Okay? But as far as the teacher seeing what you are doing on the computer only occurs during the school day. But I want you to know that that can be done. All right. So today, let's review. We have Open our Gmail. We've learned to create labels in Gmail so that as teachers send us things, we can put them into the class folder and we don't necessarily need to keep it in our inbox so that our inbox gets large. So we've learned how to do that. We've learned how to create, we've learned how to go into Google Drive and we've learned that there are folders in there that were put there by the school. If you, if you notice, when you look at those folders, there was a little head and body. That head and body means that that is shared. That folder is shared with your teacher. That means anything you put in that folder will be automatically shared with the teacher. Even if you create a folder in that folder, it's shared with the teacher. That's why when you hit create, did you guys notice that a little box came up that says create and share? Do you remember that? Okay, because that, that's what that's telling you. It's saying this isn't just viewable by you, it's viewable by those in that folder that have access to that folder. If you create something outside of the folder, that's not something that's viewable unless you give that person the right to view it or edit it. So we learned how to create a folder in our class folders. 
We learned how to create a document. We learned how to create a presentation, spreadsheet, and of course, you're not going to know all the things. We're going to do additional training in the first week of school about some of these finer points. You've learned how to create those things, and you learned how to share them, and hopefully you share them with someone in here so that they can see in their shared with me folder that they can access it. And because I was helping people, I want to make sure, did you show them how they could find a way to put that in their drive if they want? I'm going to do that. The mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, you showed them how they could put it in their drive? Yep. Perfect. Okay. Yes. Now, something I want to show you real quick, and this is true in Drive, and it's true in with your email. Let's say that you want to look for something. You can use the search function up in that bar right there, and you can type in a couple key words. When you do that, it's going to show you every document you have that has those key words in it. So it might be if you lost something, it's an easy way to find it. You can do the same thing in Gmail. I'm not going to pull up my Gmail right now, but in Gmail, you can pull up, let me log in as a, as a demo student, hang on one second. So here I am as a student in my inbox. I can type up someone's name. Maybe I have class with Mr. Volcano as an example, and I might put in, hit, start spelling his name. Now there's not going to be anything in here because there's nothing from him right now. Let's use Ryer as an example because Mr. Ryer sent out an email last year to students. It just found, and it's my whole Gmail, it's not just my inbox, it found the email that had that person's name attached to it. So you can always use this search bar at the top. And I use it frequently at work because I get many emails. Sometimes I want to just see the email that pertains to um, a parent that sent me an email. I type in that parent's name. Those emails come up to me. You can do the same thing with your teachers or the subject. Maybe it's chapter one study guide. Maybe that was an attachment that was sent to you. So that search function can be very valuable. Okay. Okay. Before I give it back to Ms. Matilia, I showed you, review, I showed you and I told you that I get the filter reports, that we do block websites, that your teacher can see what you're doing during the school day, if you're in their class, not if you're not in their class, only if you're one of their students. They cannot see that once you leave the school. 24 hours a day, teachers can send an email, can do blogs, and can open and close documents. It's pretty cool when you're sharing a document, by the way, and you see someone else is on it. It's kind of a neat thing. You're collaborating from home. You might see that you're working on a group project and you see that person typing like right along with you. And you see that. So that's a cool thing. In the training next week, what I plan on doing is going into the details of the Google documents. I also plan on working on something called Read Write Google, which is an application that we pushed out to you. And also a couple of helpful extensions. And what extensions are is there little applications that have specific functions. Just as an example, if I go to History Channel, and I go to, anybody ever watch Counting Cars? I guys, hey, I would not mess with that guy. 
He's, I love, he does great work on those car, on those cars, though. Do you? All right, let's go to uh, Bonnie and Clyde. Explore their story. Let's say right here, I'm looking at this day in history. And this web page right here, it has a lot of clutter. We're seeing this guy, you know, he's like waking up for the morning. Right? Alright, so we don't want all this stuff. Shh, bear with me here. So we've created, we've pushed out, you see this little couch right here? Everybody probably has that couch. Alright? So when we click on that couch, we can have it clean up, and it will give us just the text, okay? So that is something that we in Bethel decided was going to be important for you to have. So we push out that extension to you so that when you're on web pages and we want to eliminate the distracting information, we can click on the couch and it will clean it up. So that's an example of some applications that we have put on to the computer. There are many, and I'm going to go into that in the weeks to come, that you'll be able to use in school. One that's very exciting is Read and Write for Google, which I think you'll find to be very neat. All right, Ms. Battalion, you had some things to wrap up. Yes. Come on over. Okay, the first thing I'm going to start with before you do the closing activity for me. Does anybody have any individual questions that you did not have answered that you think people would benefit from hearing? Anybody at all? Don't be afraid. This is the time to do it if you have a question you think other people may want to know. You're going to have to talk really loud about it, yes. We just had that question up here. How do you delete a game? So is it is it an extension? Is it in your web browser? Do you want to help? Do you know how to do it? I'll show you real quick. I was going to say, because he just did it. He knows how to do it. Did you do it in your extensions? I, he did it under the class book. Oh, okay. And then it's something. I think they mean like the apps. Yeah. It's like an app they don't want to. Yeah, I think. Let me show you something, bud. Let me see if you agree with me. See, so look up there. All right, let's take a look up here. So this is where a lot of like thing and that's how you disengaged it? Okay. See this is what I love about you, the students. I have my way, you have your way. In the Chrome browser, there is a three lines in the top right hand side of the page. This is uh, your menu. In there, you probably see something called settings. And when you go to settings on the left-hand side of the page, you're going to see something called extensions. Now, these are things that you've downloaded from the Chrome, uh, the Google Play Store. If you see right here, this is grayed out on mine. And then I have one that is dark. The difference is... These say installed by enterprise policy. These are the things that we've pushed out to you that you can't mess with. The things that you downloaded that were applications from the browser, from the Google Play Store, are in black. And you would click that you don't want them enabled. Now, where's my young man who was helping me here? Now, the other way... You did it, I'm just going to ask, you got that from the Chromebook store? Come on up here, explain. You can do it. So, you go into the Chromebook, like where the 
apps are, going to games, and then there's just a bunch of Let me ask you something. Where did, where did you go to first? Tell us where you went, went to first. Here. I went to the... Okay, in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you know the little applications box, the little boxes? Yeah. Click on that left, most left-hand box, and up will come all your files. If you then find the folder in your application box that says games, you might need to scroll left and right with two fingers, by the way. That works. Two fingers scroll. So you click games. Oh, those, those old games you've loaded, or that's what's going to That's just what's on the screen. Okay, how do you get rid of them? That's what you, like, if you click on one and you accidentally didn't want that, you click both of your fingers. But let's just say I don't know Okay. In the games folder, if you have a game downloaded or you download a game accidentally you don't want it, you use two fingers, a two finger click. Go ahead, you can sign it. You have to just sign it. Huh? Go ahead. Put your, put your stuff in. When you log into the filter, by the way, sometimes you know it's going to ask you daily to get in the filter. That's just your last name, not first name. Okay, he's saying when you click two fingers on the game, it's going to say at the bottom, remove from Chrome. And so it's going to remove that game. And when he does that, it will ask you, are you sure you want to remove? And he clicks remove. Okay, so those are two ways. I showed you my way. Thank you very much. In this young man's way, which is go to your applications folder, go to your games folder, two finger click on the game, and click remove. All right. What other questions? Can we download Skype? Can we download Skype? Google already has a service called Google Hangouts. Okay. Has anyone tried to use Google Hangouts here? Anybody? Nobody? Okay, somebody at home. So Google Hangouts really is the same, same thing as Skype for the most part. Now, that actually really jogged my memory there because I, I want to speak about that. There is no way for the district, you might have heard of this in, from you know, other districts. We do not have any ability to operate your computer. Okay? So we can't operate your camera. All right? We can push things to your computer. We can reboot your computer. But we can't go on there and, and manipulate your computer. Okay? So that's important for you to know because the camera is, an, is a function that you need to use a lot of responsibility with. Okay? If we're having problems with like Skype as an example or with Google Hangouts, what do you think we'll do? What do you think we'll do? We'll disable the sites. I can't do anything with the camera. But what I also want to tell you, and this is just being transparent with you as, as young adults, if, if this was ever stolen, okay, if it was ever stolen, no one can use this Chromebook unless they have a BP Hawks account. If they wipe the device, if they wipe the device, the police can work with the filtering service I talked about, and they can get on the computer with the police. 
So it's important for you to understand that these are enrolled in our network. If it gets unenrolled from our network, the police can be called in and they do have access to that computer. We do not, as the district. If you're at all nervous, I don't have any problems. If, if your parents are nervous or you're nervous about the camera, you can put a piece of tape over it, I don't care. Okay? Just treat it right, but you can put a piece of tape over it. Okay? That's not a problem for me at all. But there are times where maybe you do want to shoot a little footage in class, or that you know we might use the iPads for that. I don't know, but um, or at home or something where you want to use the camera, and that's fine. Mom, question. We we have not had any issues with that. I have not been told that there's any issues with that. And, and as far as them being able to get into our domain, that's what's that's the safe haven of the domain. Yes, correct. We bounce emails that come from outside. That, yes. Correct, which is why we're not willing, that's one of the reasons we're not willing to open up that doorway. We could open that doorway, but we have not. And so mom's question is a good one. How do we look out for things that could be trying to steal information? Well, we don't allow people from outside our network to get in. Okay? All right. Other questions, please. You, any tape that came with it that just was protecting it, you can take off. Okay? It's your Chromebook to use right now. This Chromebook will be reissued to you. As seventh graders, you need to know that I will collect this Chromebook at the end of the year, and I will give you the exact same one next year as an eighth grader. So what do you think that means as far as taking care of it? Take care of it. Because it's yours. All right? Other questions? I have a good question. All right, I love good questions. So I have a specific question about an app. And here's the best way I can answer it for any person that may be thinking this. Just like on a smartphone with your parents or whoever you're at home with, friends, school teachers, Mr. Minch, if you have to ask yourself, is this appropriate for school, what do you think the answer probably is? No, right? If you can't automatically say to yourself, this is totally awesome, this would be great for one of my classes, or I wouldn't be worried at all if my mom or dad or Mr. Mitch saw this on my computer, then it's a go. Download that app and that's great. If you have to think for a second that it may be a not so good idea that you have it on your computer, I wouldn't download it. That's the best way for me to answer it. Because I don't know what a lot of these new apps are that you guys like. And the easiest way for me to answer that is for you to think about it. And if you have to put a lot of thought toward it, it probably isn't the best idea. Yes? That user identification portal will come up sometimes when it reconfigures the wireless. That's your last name, your first name, and then the same password you log on to to get into your home. So before you guys go ahead and continue downloading fun games like I'm sure you'd love to do, I need you to do one thing for me. And the easiest way for me to do this, which I don't know if I'll necessarily enjoy this in a minute, but it'll be fine for me. I want you to go back on your Gmail for me. That's your inbox where we see our email. So if you forget how to go there, you can go to gmail.com or you can just go to google.com and you will see mail in the upper right hand corner. And the reason I want to do this with you is because I feel like it would be extremely beneficial for you to know how to use these things. Because one great way that I find I can communicate with my students outside of school is through email. I've gotten many students that email me at night with questions on homework. So this is a great way to contact your teacher if you have a question. What I would like you to do right now, when you're in your inbox, you should see this, this little box in the upper left-hand corner that says Compose. How many of you have sent an email before? Great. So this shouldn't be new to you. 
I would like you to write me an email. And here's what I'm looking for. I need you to tell me three things that you learned today, maybe that you already knew but was a refresher for you, or even that you liked or enjoyed. And I want you to send those in an email to me. Now, who can remember what my name is? It's been a while since I introduced myself. Nope, close. It's up on the screen for those of you that are actively paying attention. Yes. Battalion, close enough. If you type in B E T T in the top, I'm not Betty Francis. Okay? I want you to send an email to me. Again, you're sending me three things either that you learned or you enjoyed from the training today. Now I have a question for those of you out there, seventh grade students coming up this year. Do you think I want to see in the email that's sent to me um, lowercase letters, not complete sentences, three words listed in your email? What do you think I want to see coming to me in an email from all of you seventh graders coming up to school this year. Yes. B E T T. Start with that. B -E -T -T. Yes, it will pop up. Does anybody have an answer to my question? What should I see in this email? I. Things you learned to Thank you. Proper grammar. Complete sentences. Don't just send me three words. Here's one other thing. You need a subject in the email that you're sending me. Because I want to know when I look there what the email is going to be about. So what I would like you to type as the subject is Chromebook. You hit compose. Well, so you should be sending me an email with a subject Chromebook and three things that you either learned, already knew that was a refresher for you, or that you enjoyed from the orientation today. And then when you are done, you want to hit send. It's the blue box. Yeah, I'm probably going to be blowing up now with tons of emails. That's what I want to see, though. That means you're sending it, and I received it. Now you can say you want to send an email. There you go. Done? Mm -hmm. I want you to finish that real quick.